Good evening, everybody. We're going to call the meeting of July 5th, 2017 to order. Ben, can I have the roll call, please? Deputy Mayor Chair. Here. Council Members Long. Napolitani. Here. Shepica. Here. And Mayor Siciliano. Here. Everybody, please rise for Pledge of Allegiance and please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer thereafter. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The notice requirement of the Open Public Meeting Act has been satisfied. A copy of the annual notice was sent to the Asbury Park Press Coaster, posted in Town Hall, and filed in the office of the Municipal Clerk on December 29, 2016, and revised on June 29, 2017. There's two fire exits, one to my right, which takes you out to the front parking lot. One to my left will take you out meandering down the hall and to that parking lot as well. If you have a cell phone, now's a good time to turn it off. You can keep it on if you want to take pictures. And we have no council reports for tonight, so we're going to go right into the agenda items. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome um, Mike Michello for his first meeting sitting here. So everybody, this is Mike. We've talked about him. He knew he was coming. And he made his first meeting. We're impressed. <laughs> so thank you for that, Mike. <laughs> Won't be any heavy lifting tonight, but there'll be times. Uh, so the purpose of the public portion is to solely ask questions and understand resolutions that appear on the agenda. It's not an occasion for the public hearing on an ordinance. All questions not related to an item on the agenda should be asked during the public comments portion at the conclusion of the meeting. Does anybody have anything on the resolution tonight? Come up to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Or bring the mic to them. You read that? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Hudson. It was on until the Mahoris Drive. There he is. Anyway, uh, uh, just a question on the resolution. I assume that um, uh, this is based on the rate being settled, school tax rate being settled by uh, the start of the school sometime. Yeah, the, well, the blended rate that you see here, that's what it's going to be. This is, yeah, we don't, I don't know what's going to happen after in the future, but this is what we're going with. Okay, and I assume that uh, I talked to the uh, chief financial officer earlier today, and he said that uh, the budget would reflect the possibility of uh, uh, the Lock Arbor tax rate not coming in. So I assume that... Uh, the treasurer is assuming that the loss would occur over the full year rather than then. Yeah, this this is for the yeah, this total levy is for the full year for okay. all, all groups. And uh, I I presume that this is all done in conjunction with the county, uh, the school district, and uh, the village of Lock Arbor. Well, yes, this will be sent for certification this week. Of course, then we'll get the rate back. But yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's my question. Okay. Thank you. So tonight. We have resolution 17151. Someone please, uh, this is to offer. I'm sorry, this, uh, let me just read it in since everybody's here. Authorize the tax collector to issue estimated third quarter tax bills, tax bills in accordance with NJSA 5442662. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. Second. Deputy Mayor Chair. Yes. Council members in the Napolitani. Yes. Jepica. Yes. And Mayor Sosiano. Yes, and that's it for the resolution. Anybody have anything else at this time? Remain to Ocean Township business. Now's the time to come up to the microphone. No? Well, once again, I want to... Oh, go ahead. Lady Barbara Hudson. For an, an there ordinary is. person, you might. I'm going to receive the tax bill now. you got to talk into the mic. The camera's not going to pick you up. I am talking. Stand, stand up here, please. And turn it. And hold your left foot up. <laughs> no, we're not there yet. Might have to hold the tinfoil. Like, like the old antennas. Like the old antennas. Yeah, that sounds good. That's good. Yeah. As an ordinary person, I'm going to get a tax bill now, which is, I'm waiting for my yearly tax bill. Right. And what I'm going to get is an estimate based on. You're going to get your tax bill based on the numbers we have that are going to be certified. Yeah. Right. Now, should something happen and go our way with the uh, other situation, then then you'll get a, another tax. Well, 
Decrease. Decrease. So it would be, this is the worst case scenario tax bill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, drive safely. It's a busy time of year, summer. Just adhere to all the uh, local laws and you'll be fine. <laughs> no, that's fine. All right. Thank you for that. Anybody else? Seeing or hearing no one, so we'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Okay. Nope. Make the motion to close Oh, adjourn the meeting. Sorry. <laughs> and I'll Adjournment. Sorry. And I'll second it. Deputy Mayor Chair. Yes. Council Members Napolitani. Yes. Jepica. And Mayor Sociano. Yes, meet and adjourn. Thank you all for coming. Remember, we are twice a day on Channel 77 and 22 at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Thank you all for coming. Meet and adjourn. <laughs> I don't know. All right, good evening, everybody. We're going to get the meeting started shortly. Everybody take your seats and then... Uh, We'll get the show on the road. We're going to call the meeting of June 22nd, 2017 to order. Vin, take the roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Chair. Here. Council Members Long. Here. Napolitani. Shepica. Here. And Mayor Siciliano. Here. Everybody please rise for a pledge of allegiance, and then please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer thereafter. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. A moment of silent prayer, please. Remains. Thank you. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, good evening. Good to see everybody here. We got a couple of uh, recipients here of some uh, proclamations we're going to give out shortly. We'll get that started in a moment. But first, let me open up the meeting. So the notice requirement of the Open Public Meeting Act for this meeting has been satisfied. A copy of the annual notice is sent to the Azure Park Press Coaster, filed in Town Hall with the Municipal Clerk on December 29, 2016. There are two fire exits, one to my right, which will bring you out to the front parking lot, and one to my left through the back door there, also bring you out to the front parking lot. If you have a cell phone, now's the time to turn the volume off. You can keep it on for pictures, of course, and if you need to make a call, kindly go out into the hallway, and then uh, that way you don't disturb everybody else. So tonight we have a couple proclamations. Before we come down, I just want to go down the line and get some uh, reports from uh, our council folks. So, Don, do you have anything for us? Yes, uh, we have July 3rd. It's going to be our 4th of July celebration. Mm. Um, we are starting at 6 o'clock. We have um, Johnny Patella, Patillo. Patillo, yeah. Um, he's going to be our um entertainment we also have a clown that's going to do balloon figures we have food we have um a very nice fireworks display that's going off at 9 30 and um everyone's welcome um hope looking forward to everybody coming yeah it's going to be a great event good Hopefully thanks Don. we're all set to go right yep awesome Rich, you have something for us? Yes, Mayor, I do. Uh, as the Vice President of Ocean's Community Hope Fund, which is a registered 501c3 nonprofit, I'm happy to report that about two weeks ago, the Community Hope Fund awarded grants to five area organizations that promote positive behaviors and attitudes in youth. The application asked the applicants to write a narrative describing how their program promotes positive youth development the young persons that are served in their program, their program's goals and objectives, and how their program's objectives are measured. The organization's awarded grants are the following. The Euphrates Project, the Mercy Center, the Ocean Police Department's LEAD Program, and Ocean Township's Department of Human Services. So we're very happy with the applicants uh, who applied for our grant program and we look forward to offering that program again next year. Great. Good stuff, Rich. Thank you very much. Sure. Rob, any two quickies? Uh, planning board meeting this uh, coming Monday has been canceled. We have a special one uh, Thursday. Those start at 7 o'clock if you're interested. And uh, I had the pleasure of attending uh, Ice Cream with a Cop mm. the other night um, over at Deal Test Site. Uh, another community outreach program for the police department trying to get out into the community and uh, introduce themselves and make the kids and, and adults feel comfortable. Uh, keep your eyes out. They're going to be doing a couple more throughout the summer. Yes, they're going to take that show on the road, and it was great. Yeah, Free ice cream. How can you beat that? Greg, anything for us? 
Uh, yes. Um, as the result of the next meeting of the governing body being on the uh, 13th of July, uh, tonight is the last council meeting that I will be attending as the interim manager. Uh, next week, uh, Mr. Michello begins uh, in this role. I want to express my sincere appreciation to uh, the Township Council uh, for allowing me to return to Ocean, um, a place where uh, a large part of my career began a number of years ago. I want to thank the uh, department heads and the support staff, all of whom have been incredibly cooperative and helpful. Uh, this is a very fine community. There are a lot of dedicated uh, municipal employees here who really want to serve the best interests of the residents and the taxpayers. And I really enjoyed being able to spend time with all of you and with them. And thank you. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Marty? Yeah, I do have something to say because I uh, recognized it was Greg's last meeting and it's been a pleasure, frankly, to serve uh, with him and to learn a lot from him. Uh, he is an ultimate professional and uh, we were in good hands in very difficult times over the last several months and I think he's done a great job and uh, it was a real pleasure. Great. Thank you, Marty. And I was going to also close out with uh, being that it was Greg's last meeting with us. I was going to acknowledge you for that. But Greg came into us on an interim basis and was here really physically in the building Thursdays and Fridays, but was available to me 24-7, which was great and a pleasure to work with. And I didn't know what to expect when he said, you know, Andrew was leaving and then I was going to be here myself several days and putting more hours in. But Greg was going to come in as an interim manager. Well, he was more than an interim manager. Greg came in and he attacked every file that was on that desk in there in the meeting room. And he really worked on items there and really cleared up a lot of stuff for us. So he was really a pleasure to have. I'm going to say this, and I mean it in an affectionate way. He's an old pro, and it's really somebody that you really wanted to have in this town during that transition time. And I'm just really glad that you were there, Greg, and you were able to step up. You exceeded my expectations, I'll say that. Not that we're going to pay you anymore. <laughs> but I, I don't ask, but I, I do want to say that I was uh, – very surprised and pleasantly surprised at the way you handled this position. I think it was great, and thank you for bringing us into the transition time, which I'll be working with our new manager for another month or so. But Greg was just really, really fantastic to have here in the town and keeping projects moving for now and even in the future. He's gotten us straightened out on a lot of items. So thank you for joining us. And I know you're going to be with us physically for another week or two, but for the public meeting, I just want to thank you publicly for for joining us. It was great. Thank you very much, but it always helps when I set a low bar. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a high bar. <laughs> One other public announcement, there's a lot of road construction out there in the Wanna Massa section. And so, you know, you have several utilities out there. You have the water company, you have the gas company, and you have TOSA, the uh, sewage authority, all out there trying to fix old pipes and doing this and that. And uh, so be patient. Uh, they're going to come back and fix those patches that they made in the roads. They will be leveled off and planed and et cetera. And then we'll reevaluate roads after that, which ones we'll need to move up on our pavement schedule. Of course, we'll get to them as we can. So just be patient. Thank you for your patience. At this time, we're going to come down. We have a couple of uh, people very deserving of certificates. So we're going to start with our Eagle Scout. I'll call them up in a moment, but I'm going to ask everybody to come down with me. Oh, I, I figured it's more efficient for me to carry it down than the, we'll plant it there for her later. So tonight's great. It's a great honor because typically uh, part of being mayor, some of the fun part is going to the Eagle Scout Circle of Honors, you know, which is great. Court of Honor, rather. I'm sorry. So tonight it's somebody who I know very well. It's a family who grew up down the street from me back in the old neighborhood and then followed me to the new neighborhood. Or did I follow you, Karen? You, I probably followed you, guys. <laughs> but it's great. So, CJ, I'm going to ask that CJ Casagency, come on up, Chris, and we're going to uh, talk about your project first and then talk about your Eagle Scout accomplishments because it's great. So, CJ made the rank of Eagle, which is not easy, and I've said it before, for kids just to even stick with it. It's a big commitment because, you know, as they get older and they go through the process and they get into the next step and the next step and the next rank, 
A lot of distractions come their way. They're in high school. Their peers are there. Their license comes along. Girls, this, that. You know, there's just so many things can really pull them away and keep them off track. But to finish it, Eagle Scouts, I think it's only like some 4% actually finish and go that far. Is that right? About, yeah, about 4%. So really, you, you're to be commended just for finishing and just for doing that. I think it's great that you said that. So let's hear it for him just for finishing and attaining the rank of Eagle. So CJ, tell us about your project. It was something pretty cool. It was over at the Historical Museum, right? Yeah. So um, I was approached by uh, Mr. Gary Adelson, who's the director of the museum, and he brought up uh, the Victorian Playhouse. And I asked him what he needed me to do. Um, he said uh, to replace the fence. Uh, replace broken window panes, uh, re scrape off and repaint the siding. And you were like the indentured slave over there for the summer, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. It took about, I want to say, about a year to do, because sports took a lot of time, friends, everything, school. All those distractions really happen, right? Yeah, they really do. It took a lot of your time. But you did a great job. I went by and had an opportunity to see what you've done. And so folks now, I mean, they have to come up with a project to complete their rank of Eagle Scout. And it's something that they come up with. And a lot of times the parents get involved too, helping with these projects. But this is something I think CJ pretty much tackled by himself. And he said the time he put into it. But the benefit, CJ, for what you've done and the help that you've done for those folks over there, because that's a, that's a treasure for us to have in our town. And for you to go and attack that job, I think it was great. So fantastic. Thank you for doing that. Let's hear it for, for that one. So we have a proclamation. We want to recognize you for all that you've done because it's fantastic. So this goes on to explain about CJ and his group and the Troop 71 and whatnot. And it goes to, whereas, I'll just go right to the middle of this because a lot of nice things in here and they're all true. Whereas to fulfill the requirements of Eagle Scout, CJ refurbished the exterior of the playhouse, what he mentioned, by replacing the windows replacing portions of the fence and paint inside and playhouse. Additionally, CJ raised funds, which you didn't tell us, to be donated to the museum. What was that about? Uh, raising the funds? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was actually told by my scout master at the time to um, just ask for donations, even though um, all the costs for uh, the supplies and materials would be covered by the museum, because I, I, I had to do the fundraising just as part of paperwork. And I thought, um, just why, why not donate it? Because I know um, the tower is getting rebuilt in the back, and I thought it, I thought it'd be cool for it to go to that. It's actually going back to the playhouse for um, future repairs, which is actually really cool, and um, I'm really happy about that. That's cool. How, how much did you raise? Uh, Nine hundred sixteen dollars. Wow! You did? Wow! That's look at this guy. All right, you're, you're now the chairman of my next campaign committee. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Anyway, so now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Christopher P. Sislano, and the Township Council of Ocean Township, hereby honor and congratulate C.J. Christopher Kazajanski for Eagle Scout rank. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Stand up here for some photos. If your mom and dad want to get a shot with you and your certificate here. For the newspaper. Uh -oh, here comes mom. Wait a minute. <laughs> you want to get in? You want to get in? Yeah, come on. Yeah, let's come get on. Jan. Hey, Jan. Come on, come on back. Oh, no, we'll get you. How about mom and. Uh, no, everybody. Get your mom in here. Come on. Where's your brother? Nick. Come on, Nick. Don't spoil the picture. Get up here, Nick. Nick's jealous. He didn't get. He didn't get eagle. Did you get eagle, Nick? He missed that. Huh? He was playing. He was playing little league. He couldn't get. He couldn't. You got bigger since I saw you last. It's his. It's his hat. Great. It's his hat. If I wear a hat and fall? Yes. <laughs> Please, Rob, you ruin the picture. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Congrats again. Let's hear it for CJ, everybody. Awesome. Good job. 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 Good
Okay, and the hits keep on coming. We have more. So, a while back, actually, last year I put something together called, you know, Lunch for Super Seniors. It was really nice, well received. We had a lot of our seniors come out, and I did something that we wanted to do for like the 90 plus club. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice to extend it maybe a little more to other seniors? Well, the Girl Scouts beat me to it. They came up with a little project here where they thought, we'll have a luncheon for the seniors. So this was, let me just, without my glasses here, i got to make sure I get it right. So it's Troop 405, right? And so these girls, along with their uh, troop leader, Melina Lushine. Lushine? Okay, sorry, Melina. Lushine, they put this together, this beautiful luncheon, and it was held over at the Oakhurst meeting room. that We dubbed it that name for uh, Mr. Long because he likes that name. <laughs> we call it the Oakhurst meeting room. He wants it to have a real formal name. It doesn't yet. But anyway, they put on a nice little luncheon, and they also put on a little entertainment, which was something that I didn't do when I had my luncheon. I just gave them lunch and handed out certificates. So these girls were great. So, Marlene, you want to come on up, help me call up whoever's here, and we could acknowledge them and tell us a little bit about how this all started. So whose idea was it? So it was the girls. They worked on their bronze award for Girl Scouts, which is um, an award that Girl Scout juniors do. And they're, um, they decided they would work with a segment of the community and they chose the seniors. And so what they did is working with Jennifer Appio, they decided to um, start a birthday club and send birthday cards to all of the seniors. And then they wanted to throw them a party. Oh. So they um, worked with Jennifer. We sent out, invita uh, they, one of our girls, Eden, designed the invitation. They sent it out. Good job, Eden. The girls broke into committees, and there was a decorating committee, a food committee, an entertainment committee, and a um, and I, I guess that those were the four committees. And they chose the menu, they chose the decorations, and they worked really hard um, putting it all together. And then they put on a great show the day of, and we had about 20 seniors that came, yeah. and it was really a, a wonderful event, and I know Jennifer has told me that they, they still talk about it. Well, you know they do, because beyond what you've done, you've done something else for a lot of these seniors, and I noticed it also when we had our luncheon, that it's an outing for them. For many who are typically sometimes shut in, they don't get out that much, and for them to have an event to go to, and then to have the entertainment, and the job you girls did was spectacular. I mean, really, the entertaining part, the jokes, everything, the food, the whole, it was pretty good. I was just, I was very surprised, and I said, that was really a nice thing. So I'm going to have to get their help next time I do one of these senior lunches, because they had some great ideas and great concepts. So let's hear it for them again, and we're going to call them up one at a time. So I think we have a couple, you know, school just ended yesterday, right? So we have a lot of folks who are out already started their vacation, so we're going to let you uh, tell us. So these are the ones that are here. We're going to have you call them up because you'll get the names right. I may not. So, uh, Taylor Serco. Come on up, Taylor. <laughs> and we're going to ask you girls to stay up here for a group shot later, okay? So come on, get your certificate. She give, her, give her their certificate no, so she knows. Oh. Uh, Eden Cotler. They were facing out, the ones that were here. Oh, okay, then this is the right Poor Vinny, he worked so hard on this. He had it Here's Taylor. Okay. Here's Taylor. See what happens when you turn it over to the mayor. Okay, then Juliana Linus. Emma Lusheen. Oh, yes, that's our MC there, right? <laughs> Madison Yushin. And Isabella Vecchiano. Great. And let me just, I'm just going to read off the names of the other girls that aren't here, they're on vacation. So we had Amanda Brannon, Mallory Brannon, Alexander Burke, Dara Fisher, Ashley Griffith. Eve Siegel, uh, Dani Taylor, and Gabby, I'm sorry. Milana. Oh, oh, Mil oh, Milana Young's not here? Mm -hmm. Okay, and we had Gabby Zeidenfeld? Zeidenfeld. So those, they couldn't be with us tonight, but let's hear for them as well, because <laughs> it's 
spectacular. Girls are really great. Really, really great. So let's get a nice picture here. And, and don't block out Rob Achara here. He's I'm up. That's all right. I got my, I, I'm up on my toes. I don't want another third grader taking, standing in front of you. Good job again. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for doing that. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming. So at this time, we're going to take a short recess. We're going to go back up to the dais. So we'll give you folks a chance. If you need to go and do something else, you're welcome to stay and listen to town business. Or if you have something else you need to get to or attend to, now would be the time to do that. Thank you all for showing up. Okay. We're back in session. So, the purpose of this public portion is to solely ask questions to understand resolutions that appear on the agenda. It's not an occasion for a public hearing, not an ordinance. All questions not related to an item on this agenda should be asked during the public comments portion of the meeting. Uh, does anybody from the public have anything on the consent agenda or resolutions? Come up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Mm -hmm. I guess he's going to shut the door. They all are. Barbara Hudson. I just wanted to ask you, there's something here about the police. I'm sorry, I didn't look at, I didn't check That's it right. out. But what, what are they getting? They have a grant for the police for Homeland? No. It's no? Emergency oh, for emergency management? That's on there? Yeah, that's the grant that funds the uh, emergency management coordinator. It's a matched grant, uh, $10,000 from the federal government. That's personnel then? I mean, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else on the consent agenda resolutions? No? Okay. So tonight we have a workshop for June 8th, 2017. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Chair. Yes. Council Members Long. Yes. Shepika. Yes. And Mayor Sosiano. Yes. Also we have resolution 17140 through 17146. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Chair. Yes. Council Members Long. Yes. Shepika. Yes. And Mayor Sosiano. Yes. Uh, for, we have no vouchers for individual action. We have Resolution 17147, authorize the acceptance of the following grants, State Homeland Security subgrant. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second it. Deputy Mayor Chair. Yes. Council Members Long. Yes. Shepika. Yes. And Mayor Sosiano. Yes. 17148, authorize the Mayor to execute an agreement with Payergo Inc. in connection with the online bank and payments for an 18-month period from July 1st, 2017 through December 31st, 2018. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Chair. Yes. Council Members Long. Yes. Shepika. Yes. And Mayor Sociana. Yes, 17149, approve the continuance of an assessment installment payment plan for the owner of Block 40, Lot 33, for the special assessment payment. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Chair. Yes. Council Members Long. Yes. Shepika. Yes. And Mayor Sosiano. Yes. And 17150, authorize a professional service contract for a period of July 1st, 2017 through June 30, 2018, with the following. Ready? I don't know if we should do this, but we'll see if we get everybody on board. Martin J. Arbus Esquire and the firm of Arbus Maybrook Good LLC Township Attorney. Would anybody offer that? I will offer. You will? And I'll second okay. it. Well, two for Clinton. Deputy Mayor Chair. I'm pretty excited. The chair? Oh, yes. Ooh. <laughs> Not too excited yet. Long. It's great to uh, it's great to uh, bring Marty back for another season here <laughs> with the township of Ocean. Marty does a great job, and uh, we rely on him for a lot, and he always comes through for us. I gladly vote yes. Okay. Councilwoman Shepika. Yes. And Mayor Sosiano. Yes, I concur with the Marty's body of work. Also, for introduction tonight, we have Ordinance 2298. Would you read the title? Sure. A bond ordinance providing for various capital improvements appropriating $883,500 and authorizing the issuance of $620,825 bonds and notes to finance a portion of the cost. Okay. Someone please uh, introduce Ordinance 2298. I'll introduce... I thought it was me. Is it me? That's Rob Achara. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll introduce Ordinance 22... Sorry, now I'm laughing. 2298, please. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Chair. Yes. Council Members Long. Yes. Shepika. Yes. And Mayor Sosiano. Yes, and that'll have its public hearing at the July 13th meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody have anything to mean to the township or anything on your mind that's township related? Now would be the time to come up to the uh, microphone and state your name and address for the record. 
scene right here. Oh, there is somebody. Hello, Jackie Wenzel, 610 Deal Road. Hello. Um, hi. I just saw um, I'm just here to see if there have been any updates on the Deal Road uh, project and the development and so what nothing, we're looking at in times. Yeah, nothing new except for uh, at this time we sent their concept plan to our planner for review and comments. And so he's doing just that. He's reviewing it and making comments, and uh, we'll send it back to them. If everything goes okay and they like his comments and or changes or whatever they do to it, then at that point they'll probably bring it to the planning board for uh, a preliminary for, I guess, there'll be a zoning change first, and then they'll probably make formal time to come before the planning board. So still several months before they come to a planning board. But What type of zoning change would they be making? Well, the property right now, the way it's zoned, and the reason we're part of a 12-year uh, lawsuit is we kind of zone the owners out of really developing the property, right, right. which is not legal. So uh, they're going to probably come up with something that's, you know, what was there before, part residential, part commercial, basically. It's, and then but whatever, when we whatever other requirements involved in that. When the township rezoned it, you're saying that it's going to get rezoned again differently, like larger than... No, Something probably to what it originally was, where, you know, the front part on the highway, which makes sense, <laughs> right. is commercial. Something that would stand any, anybody's scrutiny decision as far as a court, whatever, that the front's commercial and the back portion is going to be residential. Okay. But the, the what we saw at the high school is still the plan. Yeah, because he kind of planned it towards figuring that something like that is what's the most common or will probably have the best chance a residential commercial component instead of all commercial or a commercial at the bottom, residential top. So kind of how he planned it would, would probably get zoned along those lines. There'll be other um, setbacks, things like that, and mm -hmm. requirements that will have to be made that probably wasn't in his plan, but that's what the planner is going to do. Okay. And then with all that blacktop, is that going to pretty much still remain based on... He'll probably make recommendations on that as well. For Yeah, because pretty much... Yeah, green it up, things like that. So you could probably count on a planner coming back with something like that. So is there any way that the public gets to be involved or have an open Well, when they have a that? hearing on it, if it comes to uh, both boards, naturally you can come in and absolutely there'll be a, a time for you to make a comment. Absolutely, sure. And j just to understand, when, when it comes time to change the zone, uh, there is a... Present, we send it to the planning board. The planning board reviews it, and if they find it acceptable, they send it back to us. And then we have a hearing, uh, changing the zoning ordinance, just like we have a hearing on any ordinance. So the public at that point has an opportunity to be heard. And let me just correct one of the things the mayor said. Certainly, how we rezoned it did not uh, zone it out of uh, use because uh, we're still no, no, right, we don't want to. But basically, you know, that would be their claim that we had changed the zoning and and they couldn't develop it in that form. Uh, we take issue with that, but right now we're talking about potentially rezoning it, which would be more consistent with what the zone was before uh, the original stop and shop application, which was the back piece being residential and the front piece being commercial. But this is, okay, so this I'm just confused on. I thought we did rezone it, and that's why we <clears throat> we rezoned. First, it was rezoned to a B, uh, to accommodate stop and shop. Then I thought we rezoned it, which arrested that development. Right. Well, I don't know about arrested development, but it was a good show. But we zoned it for... Um, uh, initially, it had front being commercial, the back being residential. Then it was rezoned for the shop, the stop and shop right. application, and then it was rezoned again. And that rezoning has been challenged, and we've been in court for all these years relating to that ultimate rezoning. And now this is a potential rezoning back to front commercial, back residential, uh, and more consistent with what this developer is looking to do, which uh, I think was. Uh, a better proposal than what the original stop and shop might have been. So right now, what is it zoned at? We zoned the same way it was zoned, at, I believe, since the uh, stop and shop application after that was withdrawn. So right now, it's a it's a uh, hybrid, if you will, commercial. It's zoned for the whole 30 acres commercial on the bottom of storefronts and retail with residential on top. Okay. Zoned for that. That's how it was zoned That's for we, Stop and Shop. No, no, after Stop and Shop, it was zoned for Stop and Shop. It was zoned for their shopping center. Then okay. it was rezoned while that application was pending. Which to minimize the, way, the foot, foot. By the way, you couldn't do today, but it was rezoned right. with maximum uh, um, 
for each unit store being I can't remember it was thirty thousand or forty thousand. Up to right, feet. yeah, forty thousand. And with uh, the botting component being commercial, mm -hmm. and a second uh, floor being either residential seniors or um, I think office building use. Okay, but originally was commercial in the front and residential in the back, and that's what it's pretty much they're looking to change back to the original. That's originally before there was stop and show. Before stop and show. That's what how it been, had been okay. in the past. But I know the community has been talking about having more of a buffer, really keeping it natural, not mm -hmm. the landscaped buffer that's in the sketches that we saw at the high school, but something just really just leaving that wedge of land uh, well, untouched well, on Deal Road. If, if that can happen, it will happen, I think, but we're going to leave that up to landscape professionals and uh, planners and whatnot to argue whether or not what's there is will provide enough of a buffer because you have to understand once they thin out the middle of that, that may not even be as much as a buffer as you might get from a planner's recommendation and or a landscape planner may recommend. So you keep your just keep your uh, mind open is what I'm saying to whatever they recommend. You'll get a look at it, of course. You'll see it at the planning board level. but Because it's so nice just the way it is. And it if is. They're gonna, and, uh, if they're going to rezone it again now a third time, mm -hmm. it would be nice to maybe except other options i feel like we haven't you know we're kind of out of it and then at the point it gets to the planning board i feel like then it, things just sort of move along and the, well, like the community is not as involved board, before it gets to the planning board there'll be a rezoning mm -hmm. at the time there'll be a rezoning there'll be a hearing here on the zoning ordinance and you'll be op have the opportunity to be heard at that time That's because for the actual planning board application Okay, because I, as I, you know, not, it's not a secret that I've, I actually really um, oppose what's been presented. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know, I guess, Chris, you, you're, you feel a little bit more supportive of it, say, than well, I do. just based on what I've seen, I think, I, I, I just, I'm being just realistic. So you've seen other, de have other developers brought some I said they're in my office, come up any time, I'll show you the other proposals. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, I, other concepts that were introduced to. Okay, the I would love to do that. I didn't realize yeah. That, yeah. that you were serious about that. Oh, no, I'm very serious. Okay, I would look because um, I do have other, you know, I have been doing my own investigation because <clears throat> at the time when, when we had a much larger group opposing it, I think we could still wrangle them in. It just takes that type sure. of effort. And uh, many of the people that were involved at the first, uh, the first go around uh, have moved, some have moved away, some I just haven't really reached out aggressively enough to. But, um, Going, going back to that time, there was a big concern about the Indian land, about the richly historic land and artifacts that were excavated from that land. And um, I know there are some people I have spoken to that still feel, regardless of what how minimized a development could be, you're, once that land is gone, it's gone. Once there's tar on it, it's, it's gone. And isn't the township willing to do more to protect and preserve that? And of course, we do have the park, and we have all that we have, and we're appreciative of that. But that, um, that no, once no. it's gone, there's no going no, back no, to that. And and what I and, and, and through this research, people have asked me. There were people from New Jersey, from some one of the organizations that do preservation, that have done excavation on the property, and. They said that somehow artifacts were taken, but they don't know where they went. Would you well, know where they went? I had no knowledge of that at all. So this would have happened first, during the time after Stop and Shop was, you know, no, I mean, didn't proceed. And then that the state came in to it. look. I, I know nothing. So it's just hearsay. So you don't I, I have any. I know nothing about it. No. You know. I've never heard of that either. I never did either. Okay. So what happened? There are art, art, um, things that had been taken. There are artifacts taken well, there from Well, we took, uh, we took the house from them. I know right, that. we know that. And we know they, <laughs> they, they renovated the house, and that's why well, everyone we, we was, that. We was, was that. able that's to do that. That's the biggest artifact that I've seen come off But the there property. were Indian tools. Like the last time there were all these there things people been, said, can I, can I just where say would this? they be? Let me just say this, Jackie, and that, that may be so. Uh, Wayside, which is developed now, there's developments up there. Right. Uh, before their developments were built, we used to go up there and dig for bottles and arrowheads all the time. Uh -huh. As kids, what my you know father would bring us up right. there. So that was built on right. arguably Indian preservation right. or reservation, if right. you will. But so I mean, I think that happened throughout America. I know so much now. That's I mean, know, there's so little preserved. Yeah, I don't know, you know, what to say about that. Except for I have no knowledge of anything being excavated from there. And if it was, I don't know where it went to. The only thing I know that came off that property so far is. The museum, the house itself. Well, that's what I want to actually, after the meeting, talk to Barbara because she yeah. may know. I haven't had a chance maybe. to see her to find and out. Of course, maybe if, they made know. it seem like it was a mystery. Like, where did they go? Where did, yeah, and I sure. said, 
uh, anyway, that they felt that was one of the strongest angles that we had to preserve the land and perhaps could get some. They better um, hurry up and uh, bring their evidence in, so if that's what they want to do. Um, and then the last time I was here, also, um, I've been talking about the farm to table operation. Mm -hmm. I have done some research on that regard. Sorry, I'm getting feedback yeah, here. Right. Um, uh, trying to get John Bon Jovi because he has this, like, you know, soul kitchen and. He's doing farm to table, so maybe to do a more upscale version of something here. Uh, and what came up is, what is the land assessed at right now? What is the value of that? I, you know, I know there's a 32 acres. Uh, nine, close to nine, I believe. I'll look it up for you tomorrow, but I, I think I remember that number coming up. Nine, nine, nine million for that 32 acres if somebody mm -hmm. else was coming to well, that's maybe the challenge value. the current. That's the assessed value, not the value. Yeah, the market value is something totally different. Do you know what that is? It's whatever the highest bidder is willing to pay. So what are they willing to pay for it now? Twelve million, with, Those, with the ten million plus whatever road improvements would be required. So that's that's as much as I know. So they're willing to pay ten million plus whatever improvements. Yeah, I have to put about two point, you know, over two million dollars in road improvements. That w that was in our ordinance. Whoever takes the property over. But if somebody were to do something that would be much more um, less invasive to the property, it doesn't matter what they put there as long as it's within the ordinance. The value they still have to pay the price. It doesn't matter what. And I think that's something like we can't control. Say, okay, listen, you can build in there, but you have to build this. Unless we did a rehabilitation zone, then we can actually tell them what to do. But then you don't get any tax revenue out of it anyway. So, mm -hmm. so you're saying ten, it's assessed right now at ten million. It's value in that, in that range. But the value, when was it assessed the value, last? The, uh, 19, uh, 2017. Oh, you know, okay. We just went through oh, a okay. uh, total revaluation. Okay. Um, all right. That's all for now. Thank you. I just want to point something out, though, Jackie. You know, uh, when that property was turned over in 2001, the people that lived in that or owned that property up there, Henderson House or whomever, sold the property. They had 72 acres. Uh, the former mayor at that time, uh, Mayor Weldon, was astute enough to go and approach him and say, look, we like to buy as much of as we can. Mm -hmm. And he did. He got 42 acres of it. And thank God he did that because now you have the Human Services Building back there, which is, offers services for folks in crisis counseling, bereavement counseling, uh, marriage counseling, you know, all these things free to residents of Ocean Township. We have the beautiful uh, library, which he personally was involved in the design phase of it. He went around the state to find something that looked really nice that would fit on that property and then worked on getting us that museum. So we have him to thank for even having the 42 acres that's there now. The fact that he's able to do that, I think, was really phenomenal. Is it this new blueprint? You have to come up to the microphone or else you can't hear us. Um, I know that the new development, at least in in sketch looked like it went over into our land well, that, that the township that is, may was that a, just an error on a sketch it can't do that it, in, so it's in real we're life not giving them any of that in real life you can't do that no they're okay. not getting any <laughs> okay. you can't encroach okay. on somebody else's property okay okay all right thank you oh mrs hudson who is the planner who's the planner our planner is jim higgins okay yeah. right, right. um you know fed and i were talking about you, you made the statement that uh would break the the township if you spent 50 million dollars for all the land assuming that everything all the people that wanted requests for the township to buy that land all the properties that were right, up at right. one time that were coming so that got us interested in well, how much do they pay for that now what we remember uh well they is, haven't closed this no, but i wanted to guy. just go back to history sure what we remember is that they paid five million dollars half went to uh um the turner era mm -hmm. uh, Right, they got two, uh, two point five, and the township paid, paid two point five. That's what acres. we remember. Right. right. Okay. So, in light of that, you know, times are worse, not better. Right. No. I mean, retail. I would. What? No. What? And you're saying it's assessed now for uh, twelve million? You're no, saying? no, about nine. About nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, when you think about it, two point five is not a lot of money. I mean, what you 50, uh, well, I you, you, you said you 50, well, you said 50 million if we bought all the open property that everybody wanted it's to not buy. Just that yeah, no, no, but, I, but if you, uh, and if you were going to buy, I mean, if it were 2.5 and 2.5, right? Right. 
I would relate to the 2.5 that would to purchase that land. Yeah, we can't do that. Right. Why would why First of all, Mrs. Hudson? Well, it's well, like well, me buying your house for a hundred thousand dollars. No, would I'm you just sell saying. I'm that? just saying. 2.5 was what it paid. So yeah, that was I don't believe they paid 2.5. I don't know. Where I don't know. No, I'm that curious. was. I, I think she's talking about the old acquisition when Mayor Weldon picked up the 42 acres. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. I, I believe yes, that, that they paid a lot. I'm talking about. Then it turned over again, and then it was probably four shop. four point something million to mm -hmm. the stop and shop probably paid. But anyway, their ask price now is what their ask price is. I can't control that, and so you'd have to pay. I just wanted to clear that. Up. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Hudson, sure. Excuse me. <laughs> there you go. Good job. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mayor. Fred Hudson, Mahoris Drive. Um, just a couple of questions on a, a couple of items on the workshop meeting. Mm -hmm. um, regarding the public hearing on the Monmouth County Community uh, Development Block Grant, uh, what could you tell us about that? So, uh, you know, we have the committee, the community block grant committee, which they review certain items that may qualify for the work. You know, we're, we're trying to get the maximum grant of 200000 You don't always get it, but at least they come up with some projects identifying. And uh, some of the projects were um, sidewalks continuing up um, in the industrial park because there's bus stops and there's workers there. Then they use that, whatever they felt that may be, that way it may qualify. The other one was um, putting those signals at the crosswalks, Deal Road and West Park Avenue, showing them, you know, how many more seconds to the green light. They figure that's a safety item. Maybe that would qualify for this grant. And the other one, which was, they feel would be high priority, would be to put a sidewalk in Lincoln West Park to Deal Road on the west side because it would service the folks who live in the apartments from uh, back there, you know, up West Park Avenue and get folks to the bus stops and from that bus stop maybe even all the way up to the Deal Road. Uh, so they feel that's probably the strongest possibility for the grant is the sidewalk on Highway 35. Okay. Was anybody at the public hearing? Yes. Was anybody at the public hearing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, from the public. Yes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah folks sitting hearing. in the third row right there. The Maddens were there. We had some questions. I think Jack had some questions here from uh, Word on the Shore, and you know, we've all we all had questions ourselves as far as what we can do and you know what was available. Yeah, your mic went off, Mr. Hudson. You did it. You get blamed anyway, Mrs. Hudson. Okay. <laughs> there he is. That's all the old growl we're looking for. <laughs> okay. What can you tell us about that? Oh, so we had uh, put it into our capital improvement project a few years ago to resurface the tennis courts over at the pool club over there. Of course, now that you're having the the uh, center being built, the uh, recreation building being built there, we're going to actually reconstruct or rebuild the court. So the bid had to be to include that. Okay. Uh, and the review concerning the township parks letter. Okay. So uh, we're all always out there with a keen eye of beauty and trying to enhance the parks and whatnot. So uh, we're looking into just making sure that we have some money left each year we can put into improving our parks, updating the equipment, cleaning them up a little bit. We don't want to lose sight of that before they get too far away. Myself and Deputy Mayor uh, Achara and Councilman Long, Shopago, and that, we all get approached by folks who use the parks and say, hey, this could use a little sprucing up. So we got to keep an eye on that as well. Okay. But did you get a letter concerning that from somebody? Well, we get letters. I get them periodically. Once a year, I think uh, Deputy Mayor Achara may have gotten one. Donna has gotten them before about folks using them saying, you know, Maybe a piece of equipment's uh, rusty or old or faulty, and it's good that they let us know so we can let Public Works know as well. Okay, thank you. You are. And uh, one other thing, I'm a little unclear as to how to read process concerns for demolition of property. Well, so we just, uh, you know, when you you're demoing a property, it's a long, arduous uh, process, of course, 
And so we sit in here also question, you know, how's the process? How can it be more efficient? What can we do? But naturally, you're dealing with a lot of uh, outside agencies beyond your control with insurance, banks, et cetera. It's not just dealing with people in probate and uh, estates, things like that. Okay. Well, that refers to council concerns then. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. One minute. Uh, I'm a little concerned about the buffer. You seemed a little weak on talking about a buffer. It's Remember the well? Yes. I mean, if we have this, yeah, so you're saving the well. The well, we're going to save and that we, well. What? And it was Mr. Uh, your friend. We want a lush buffer. You got it. All right. Okay. But I didn't, I didn't hear that. I want a lusher buffer than you are. <laughs> How's that? I concur. Okay. Okay. I'm going to hold you to that. All right. <laughs> Then you have to come up to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Again? I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jackie Wenzel, 610 Deal Road. There, I remember from the last time, there is a very, very tall, large evergreen tree there that, that was supposed to be. I mean, they can't take that tree down. Uh, I, was, I mean, with, with the right soil, they probably could. I mean, I, I do. I, I just think that that whole wedge has to just be ignored do you from know, that. Well, that would be in the line of sight of the circle and improvement. Just telling you, it really would be. But at one time... My brother Maybe proposed in the to bring that to Rockefeller Center, and they didn't want it. Yeah, it wasn't wide enough, I guess. Yeah, it just wasn't the right specimen. It's, okay. you know, it looks but nice. But I remember it good. was a historic tree, and it had, you know, because that, that corner before the house was moved was in the New Jersey Historic Registry. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we don't qualify for that anymore, unfortunately, because it was moved. But um, I have now another unrelated question to the corner, uh, but since we're here, I thought of it. Um, the deer crossing signs. Mm -hmm. um, I see there's another, a new one, I guess, that came, he came here, but there really are not enough yeah. in front of I, the park, and I'd right. love to see more. I well, put one up I'll, on I'll my own. I'll about order. Maybe we should look at if we can order more. more we'll see. What am I going to say about that? I found the deer don't even read them. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know no, I think one. Right, I think there should be one right at your parking lot driveway here because uh, when people come off Mammoth, they come off Mammoth going pretty fast and then they start oh, up Dill Road. Right there, right across the street, there's one. On right. Mammoth there before right you there. make the right? Yes. Just at our, at our parking lot. Just right where our parking lot is. That's going out to Mammoth. Yeah. But I'm saying on Deal Road. All right. Because well, well, people we'll come from, say, Allenhurst, mm -hmm. Asbury, those areas, and they make that left and they start speeding up and they're, I see deer crossing from that, that f part of the golf course over very often and then when you get to whale pond there should be another because that corner where your sign is announcing all the town news there's the deer migrate there all the time and they're always crossing there so it's there's one but it's just up a little bit and well, we then in the there, evening now. it's so we have dark. a light to stop them yeah i know but when the light's green they go speeding yeah. up deal road so right, i was we'll, just going to we'll, say we'll and i think on both sides because they're, they're just so many and and, and and we love them and it's so sad to see them dead on the street so if we could get people to drive a little slower there yeah. any way to get the speed limit slow down there at all um probably not here's what we do we don't even if we want the speed limit slow down what we normally do is send it to traffic and they'll do a study that's you know through state guidelines and they'll come up with a a, you know, a metrics of what the speed limit really should be. And a lot of times, they come up with a higher number. It's really, don't ask me how or why, but they have a system that they use. So uh, asking them to lower the speed there based on the volume, the traffic, and the length of the road, probably not. Because, you know, when, you go, when you're driving and you go through other towns, as soon as you get into the village, like you could be going upstate or through Connecticut. Yeah, as soon as you get we're into not, a village like this. We're not a village. We're, a, we're township. a township. We're 35 sections makes a township. We're not right. a village. Right, so it does. A village or boroughs are really different. You can it's just our neighborhood by. and their children I got you. I, go and back I, and forth with their I bikes. I agree with you on that part, I, but I, it's just not, not really. Uh, is that 45? They go 60, you know. Right. So, But whenever you put up those signs, it really minimizes well, it. They're you not attracted to those giant signs. You want to know the truth? I'll, I'll be honest with you. Folks, sit on your front lawn and you'll see a car whiz by and go, my gosh, you must be doing 50. And the reality is they're probably doing 37. It's really hard for you to judge because it happens all the time. I was with the chief on a I'm call. on that street. I, I, I was with that. the chief at somebody's house and we were, and he had the gun. And the lady was complaining, you know, they're whizzing by here, they're doing 50. And everyone was 32, 33. And he was showing, look. On what street? This is on Sunset on Avenue. By well, I'm just saying, I'm sure there's some people that speed, but most of the time... They're really not going as fast as you think, but we'll 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 look into it for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Okay.
Wrong. Oh, nine. <laughs> uh, for the at the uh, park, is there going to be an automatic defibrillator placed there, especially where the bandstand is? Well, during events, the police and the uh, ambulance, you know, they're there. Or um, they do have that, and they, the police have them in the cars. Uh, I understand that there is a proposal at the state in the legislature that uh, all parks will have to have a defibrillator mm -hmm. on site. Oh. Uh, so the question would be, how would they be protected from right. vandalism? Right. Uh, I don't know. That's a great question because that's kind of an open stage. Yeah. You know, so I think we're going to go. We And it's only used by permit, and so we have events, and then there's always going to be some emergency responder there, police and or first aid. So they will have them right there, but I don't know how we can actually hang one there, Doc. And, and have it protected. And protected. Yeah, we can hang one there, but I don't because, know how long it would last. Uh, a lot of stuff disappears the way it is, and right. that is an expensive item. Sure. That's a thousand dollars for. Yeah, yeah, we have them over there. Yep. We have one on the wall here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No, seeing or hearing no one. Someone, please make a motion to close the public hearing or adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. Deputy Mayor Chair. <laughs> yes. Council Members Long. Yes. Shepika. Yes. And Mayor Sosiano. Yes, meeting adjourn. Thank you all for coming. Remember, we are twice a day at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. at Channel 22 and 77. Thank you. Have you been dead?